Who is Eleanor Roosevelt? Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, born on October 11, 1884 and died on November 7, 1962, was an American political figure, diplomat, and activist. She was the First Lady of the United States from 1933 to 1945, during her husband President Franklin D. Roosevelt's four terms in office, making her the longest-serving First Lady of the United States. Through her travels, public engagement, and advocacy, she largely redefined the role of First Lady. Roosevelt then served as a United States delegate to the United Nations General Assembly from 1945 to 1952, and took a leading role in designing the text of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In 1948 she was given a standing ovation by the Assembly upon their adoption of the Declaration. President Harry S. Truman later called her the First Lady of the World, in tribute to her human rights achievements. Roosevelt was a member of the prominent and wealthy American Roosevelt and Livingston families and a niece of President Theodore Roosevelt. She had an unhappy childhood, having suffered the deaths of both parents and one of her brothers at a young age. At 15, she attended Allenswood Boarding Academy in London and was deeply influenced by its founder and director Marie Suvester. Returning to the U.S., she married her fifth cousin once removed, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in 1905. Between 1906 and 1916 she gave birth to six children, one of whom died in infancy. The Roosevelt's marriage became complicated after Eleanor discovered her husband's affair with her social secretary Lucy Mercer in 1918. Due to mediation by her mother-in-law Sarah, who was a strong financial supporter of the family, the liaison was ended officially. After that both partners started to keep independent agendas, and Eleanor joined the Women's Trade Union League and became active in the New York State Democratic Party. Eleanor helped persuade Franklin to stay in politics after he was stricken with a paralytic illness in 1921, which cost him the normal use of his legs, and she began giving speeches and appearing at campaign events in his place. Following Franklin's election as governor of New York in 1928, and throughout the remainder of Franklin's public career in government, Roosevelt regularly made public appearances on his behalf. And as First Lady, while her husband served as president, she significantly reshaped and redefined the role. Roosevelt was, in her time, one of the world's most widely admired and powerful women. Nevertheless, in her early years she was a controversial First Lady for her outspokenness, particularly with respect to her promotion of civil rights for African Americans. She was the first presidential spouse to hold regular press conferences, write a daily newspaper column, write a monthly magazine column, host a weekly radio show, and speak at a national party convention. On a few occasions, she publicly disagreed with her husband's policies. She launched an experimental community at Arthurdale, West Virginia, for the families of unemployed minors, later widely regarded as a failure. She advocated for expanded roles for women in the workplace, the civil rights of African Americans and Asian Americans, and the rights of World War II refugees. Following her husband's death in 1945, Roosevelt remained active in politics for the remaining 17 years of her life. She pressed the United States to join and support the United Nations and became its first delegate. She served as the first chair of the UN Commission on Human Rights and oversaw the drafting of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Later, she chaired the John F. Kennedy Administration's Presidential Commission on the Status of Women. By the time of her death, Roosevelt was regarded as one of the most esteemed women in the world. The New York Times called her, the object of almost universal respect, in her obituary. In 1999, she was ranked ninth in the top 10 of Gallup's list of most widely admired people of the 20th century, and was found to rank as the most admired woman in 13 different years between 1948 and 1961 in Gallup's annual Most Admired Woman poll. Periodic surveys conducted by the Siena College Research Institute have consistently seen historians assess Roosevelt as the greatest American first lady. Top 50 quotes by Eleanor Roosevelt. A woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong it is until it's in hot water. Do one thing every day that scares you. Do what you feel in your heart to be right, for you'll be criticized anyway. You gain strength, courage and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You are able to say to yourself, I have lived through this horror. I can take the next thing that comes along.
You must do the thing you think you cannot do. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. The purpose of life is to live it, to taste experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experience. It takes courage to love, but pain through love is the purifying fire which those who love generously know. We all know people who are so much afraid of pain that they shut themselves up like clams in a shell and, giving out nothing, receive nothing and therefore shrink until life is a mere living death. Many people will walk in and out of your life, but only true friends will leave footprints in your heart. No matter how plain a woman may be, if truth and honesty are written across her face, she will be beautiful. We are afraid to care too much, for fear that the other person does not care at all. To handle yourself, use your head. To handle others, use your heart. You can often change your circumstances by changing your attitude. Beautiful young people are accidents of nature, but beautiful old people are works of art. Quote. If someone betrays you once, it's their fault. If they betray you twice, it's your fault. The reason that fiction is more interesting than any other form of literature, to those who really like to study people, is that in fiction the author can really tell the truth without humiliating himself. With the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. Do not stop thinking of life as an adventure. You have no security unless you can live bravely, excitingly, imaginatively. Unless you can choose a challenge instead of competence. Happiness is not a goal. It's a byproduct of a life well lived. Life is what you make it. Always has been, always will be. Life was meant to be lived, and curiosity must be kept alive. One must never, for whatever reason, turn his back on life. It is not fair to ask of others what you are not willing to do yourself. You have to accept whatever comes, and the only important thing is that you meet it with the best you have to give. What could we accomplish if we knew we could not fail? In the long run, we shape our lives, and we shape ourselves. The process never ends until we die. And the choices we make are ultimately our own responsibility. A mature person is one who does not think only in absolutes, who is able to be objective even when deeply stirred emotionally, who has learned that there is both good and bad in all people and in all things, and who walks humbly and deals charitably with the circumstances of life, knowing that in this world no one is all-knowing and therefore all of us need both love and charity. Once I had a rose named after me and I was very flattered. But I was not pleased to read the description in the catalog, no good in a bed, but fine up against a wall. Friendship with oneself is all important, because without it one cannot be friends with anyone else in the world. Never allow a person to tell you no who doesn't have the power to say yes. Never mistake knowledge for wisdom. One helps you make a living, the other helps you make a life. Quote. No one won the last war, and no one will win the next war. When will our consciences grow so tender that we will act to prevent human misery rather than avenge it? I think, at a child's birth, if a mother could ask a fairy godmother to endow it with the most useful gift, that gift would be curiosity. Work is always an antidote to depression. One thing life has taught me. If you are interested, you never have to look for new interests. They come to you. When you are genuinely interested in one thing, it will always lead to something else. I believe that anyone can conquer fear by doing the things he fears to do. Remember always that you have not only the right to be an individual, you have an obligation to be one. You cannot make any useful contribution in life unless you do this. Light a candle instead of cursing the darkness. People grow through experience if they meet life honestly and courageously. This is how character is built. It's your life but only if you make it so. Do the things that interest you and do them with all your heart. Don't be concerned about whether people are watching you or criticizing you. The chances are that they aren't paying any attention to you. It's your attention to yourself that is so stultifying. But you have to disregard yourself as completely as possible. If you fail the first time then you'll just have to try harder the second time. After all, there's no real reason why you should fail. Just stop thinking about yourself. I think that somehow, we learn who we really are and then live with that decision. One's philosophy is not best expressed in words, it is expressed in the choices one makes. In the long run, we shape our lives, and we shape ourselves. The process never ends until we die, and the choices we make are ultimately our own responsibility. A stumbling block to the pessimist is a stepping stone to the optimist.
It isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. The Marines I have seen around the world have the cleanest bodies, the filthiest minds, the highest morale, and the lowest morals of any group of animals I have ever seen. Thank God for the United States Marine Corps. Freedom makes a huge requirement of every human being. With freedom comes responsibility. For the person who is unwilling to grow up, the person who does not want to carry his own weight, this is a frightening prospect. Every time you meet a situation you think at the time it is an impossibility and you go through the tortures of the damned. Once you have met it and lived through it, you find that forever after you are freer than you were before. When you cease to make a contribution, you begin to die. Pit race against race, religion against religion, prejudice against prejudice. Divide and conquer, we must not let that happen here. Today is the oldest you've ever been, and the youngest you'll ever be again.